We have taken a deep look at both the Canon C70 as well as the Red Komodo in two videos that we published last year. So we've answered a lot of questions on these cameras. However, one area of these cameras we didn't explore fully was how they work with Canon's new 0.71 RF to EF focal reducer. In this video, we'll be taking a deep look at Canon's new focal reducer and how it performs and works with some of the current RF mount cameras on the market. This new RF to EF lens adapter has been designed by Canon for their C70. It is a 0.71 focal reducer, which you may also know as a speed booster. This will allow you to use full frame EF lenses and achieve the full frame look on the Super 35 sensor of the C70, as well as get an extra stop of light to play with. Now, when I say the full frame look, what I mean is that you are achieving wider field of views while using longer focal length lenses. Now, this isn't taking a sensor design into account, just the optical and sensor size side of things. We're actually gonna be releasing a video next week, myth busting focal reducers. So keep an eye out for that. And if you want us to do a video all about the benefits of full frame, let us know in the comments. When we add the focal reducer to the C70, you can see that the field of view is now very similar to that of the C500. However, it is slightly different as the C500 Mark II has a 38 millimeter wide sensor, which is more than the speed booster and C70 combo. However, if we keep the aperture the same at f2.8, we can see that the C70 has a stop more depth of field. So what exactly is going on here? If you take our C70 and C500 Mark II here, you can see that the C500 Mark II can open the lens to a maximum aperture of f1.4, whereas the C70 with the focal reducer can open all the way up to f1. If you keep everything we mentioned earlier consistent and open up both lenses, you will have the same depth of field across both images. But the focal reduced C70 image will be one stop brighter. This is something worth bearing in mind if you are shooting with either format. The build quality of the adapter is very good. It feels incredibly solid and the physical design is pretty decent. However, the lack of quarter inch thread on the bottom of the foot is a bit odd. Instead, you have two M3 threads. Canon haven't told us what this is for yet, but I really hope either them or a third party develop some kind of quarter inch thread adapter so people can support the mount with a normal quarter inch thread lens support because this is a real issue for anyone not using the C70 and wanting to properly lock down the adapter using a regular mount or lens support system. How the adapter mounts onto the camera is the same across all RF mount cameras. However, how you secure the mount to reduce play is different and limited. The adapter comes with two support brackets that attach to the C70 body at the front and reduce play in the mount when you are operating the lens. However, while the brackets fix the play in the RF mount, you will still need to support your EF mount lens to make the setup as rigid as possible. This is a downside to regular spring-loaded mounts like EF and RF, and why Metabones offer Cine versions of their adapters, which feature locking EF mounts. One nice feature of the brackets is the fact that it has captive screws, so you aren't going to have them fall out as you're removing them from the body, which is a very nice touch. It's also worth thinking about how you want to rig the camera, as the little block on the, the bottom of the adapter cannot be removed, like the Metabones equivalent speed booster. It's around 22.3 millimeters from the bottom of the C70, so as long as you haven't got anything in the way, it should be fine. This system for the C70 is really nice, However, that isn't the same currently with other cameras. When it comes to securing the mount to the Komodo or the R5 or R6, there currently isn't an option because of the unusual design choice of the support foot. But like I said earlier, hopefully this will change. I've spoken to Canon and we are waiting for a response as to why this was their design choice and if they are planning on creating any accessories themselves to allow people to adapt it to regular quarter inch sports or other rigging. One thing that people have been asking about is lens compatibility and currently only three of Canon's L-series zooms are officially supported. However, Canon have said they will be adding to this, and it doesn't mean that some lenses work unofficially. For this, we tested a few lenses that we had in the studio and put the word out online to gather information from people who've already got their adapters to see how they behaved with each camera, which we have fed into a database, which we have put the link for in the description below. This consists of how the focal reducer behaves with certain lenses, either the C70, Komodo, R5 and R6, We've noted down how the AF works, what metadata is captured and displayed, if you can control the iris, and if the lens has it, does destabilization work? 
One cool thing we noticed when testing the lenses was how the C70 changes the focal length of the lens you attach to its new focal length when using the focal reducer. So our 50 mm prime changes to a 35 mm and zooms change also, which is pretty awesome. If you want to see if a combination you want to use is on there, then head over to the database via the link in our description. And if you have tested any combinations, let us know in the comments below and we'll update the database. When we produced our full Canon C70 review, Canon stated that the one downside of this adapter is the coverage of the dual pixel autofocus system, which is reduced from 80% of the frame to 60% when you use the adapter, which we have visualized here. This isn't the case when you are using the regular RF to EF adapters, only with the focal reducer one. This means that whatever is outside of this area, it will not be visible to the autofocus. You can clearly see the difference between these two areas as I hit the edges of frame in these tests. This is even noticeable when we tested the R5 in its Super 35 mode. So this must be a limit built into the focal reducer itself. But other than this change, one of the most asked questions we had about the C70 over the past couple of months is how exactly does using the adapter affect the autofocus performance? So let's take a quick look at how it performs with the C70 as well as the Komodo R5 and R6. For these tests, we shot with Canon's RF 24-72A mounted straight onto the camera, as well as an EF 24-72A Mark II using a straight pass-through adapter, and then the same lens with a focal reducer. We also tried the Metabones 0.71 speed booster too, but this didn't enable autofocus on the C70 or the Komodo, so we didn't include it in our tests. We kept the lenses at 50 mm on the zoom, but there may be slight changes in field of view. With the Canon cameras, we tried to use the same autofocus settings across all three cameras, which you can see for the C70 here. First off, we used the RF 24-70 straight onto the camera. The performance was good with really solid tracking. Up next was the EF 24-70 with a straight pass-through adapter. The performance is comparable to the RF 24-70, but I think the RF version of the lens is a touch snappier. With the focal reducer and the EF lens, performance seems pretty much the same as a straight pass-through adapter, apart from the coverage that we mentioned earlier. We also tested Canon's 50mm f1.2 lens wide open with the focal reducer and a Sigma 7200 f2.8 Sport at f2.8. Both of these lenses performed pretty much the exact same with the regular adapter to the focal reducer. The 50mm wide open performed really well considering the age of the lens and how shallow the depth of field is. The Sigma also performed very well wide open. Of course, these tests are nowhere near conclusive and how your lens performs will depend on the lens but from the lenses we've tested here, the performance of the focal reducer with the C70 looks to work pretty much on par with the regular pass-through adapter, which is pretty awesome. The Komodo's autofocus is surprisingly good, as we mentioned in our review of it last year. However, it is limited to area-based autofocus, so no face tracking yet, but the AF is in beta, so it is going to improve over time. However, we conducted the same tests with the Komodo we did for the C70. So we started with the RF 24-70 and then the EF version with an adapter. This performed very closely with the RF again being a touch snappier. As with the C70, the performance of the focal reducer looks to be the same as the pass-through adapter, which is unsurprising considering they probably share the same protocols. Even the coverage of the autofocus box that you can drag around on the Komodo is the same when using the focal reducer and the regular adapter. One very niche thing that I've been asked is how this adapter could get around some of the overheating issues that the R5 and R6 have. I haven't tested the updated firmware of the R5, but from the other testing that I've seen online, it seems like some of the cropped formats on the R5 and R6 can result in longer recording times before overheating. So using a focal reducer can reduce this crop from 1.6 to 1.14 times, which is much closer to full frame. However, this is a very specific solution to something that may or may not be a problem for you. But if you are looking to use this adapter with the R5 and the R6, autofocus performance is good. I would just question whether it is worth the cost for you. For a full list of all the lenses we have tested with each camera's autofocus system, you can check out the database that we mentioned earlier, which the link is in the description for. When it comes to the differences you can achieve in fields of view, it depends on the format you are shooting in and the physical sensor size of the camera you are using. Considering that the C70, Komodo and R5 and R6 are all different, the maths does get a little bit different. Crop factor is usually calculated by comparing two sensor diagonals. However, when it comes to video and cinema applications, just the width is regularly used because the footage is pretty much always captured in the landscape orientation and then you can adjust your vertical to create wider aspect ratios. So for these crop factor calculations, we'll be using a 36 mm width, as that is a common width for full frame sensors. Though there are larger ones like that of the C500 Mark II or Red Monstro, for example. To calculate crop factor, all you need to do is take the width of the sensor you are wanting to compare your second sensor to, and then divide it 
by the width of the sensor you wanted to find the crop factor of. So let's work out the crop factor of the C70 with its sensor width of 26.2 millimeters. So 36 divided by 26.2 equals 1.37. And if we do the same with the Komodo, it works out to be around 1.33. However, when using the focal reducer, your crop factor will change. To work out what the new crop factor becomes with focal reducer, you just need to times your crop factor by the focal reducer magnification, which with Canon's adapter is 0.71. So for the C70, you can do 1.37 times 0.71, which equals 0.97. And for the Komodo, it would work out to be 0.94. We can calculate all of this by using the diagonal of the sensor instead of the width, but you just need to make sure that the sizes you are comparing are the same aspect ratio. However, this will result in the same number as just using the widths. As we mentioned earlier, this means that you can achieve much wider field of views with your full frame lenses than you would when not using a focal reducer. The EOS R received quite a bit of backlash when it released because of its large 1.7 times crop factor when shooting in 4K. So for people wanting to reduce this crop factor using a focal reducer, could be a nice option. A 0.71 focal reducer will take this crop and bring it down to 1.24, which is much less extreme. We didn't test the USR with all of the other lenses that we did with the other cameras, but we did manage to capture the field of view changes you can get between full frame, the 4K crop, and then the 4K crop with the speed booster. You can see that the images line up with the maths that we mentioned earlier. With all this in mind, you'll still need to think about coverage, which we can have a look at here. For coverage, we have used our trusty light box and our Canon R5, as this is the largest format RF camera we have. We then mounted a Mamiya Sikorsky 45mm f2.8, which has been designed for use with Mamiya's 645 system, which uses 120 film, which is around 60mm wide. So this lens should have an image circle that can cover full frame sensors and beyond, which is perfect for these tests. Our first shot was to see what the coverage of the lens was like using a digital medium format camera. Here you can see that the lens covers the sensor really easily, so it will make a great lens to test if the focal reducer adds any vignette. Next, let's look at how the focal reducer works with the C70. For these tests, we shot with the C70 and Super 35 4K mode with both a straight pass-through adapter and the focal reducer, both with the Mamiya lens we mentioned earlier. You can see that both the images don't have any vignetting, and this shows that the lens will be the cause of any vignette when using the C70, not the focal reducer. When we conduct the same test with the Komodo, we can see again that the focal reducer is not adding any extra vignette to the image. So any vignetting will be the lens you are adapting onto it. We also wanted to see how the R5 behaved here too. So we shot with the adapter on in both its full frame and crop mode. In full frame mode, you can clearly see vignetting. And given that we know that the Mamiya lens covers the R5 sensor and some, we know that this vignetting is being introduced by the focal reducer, not by the lens which we should expect in this mode. In the R5's Super 35 mode, you don't experience any vignetting. So any vignetting you are experiencing when using the focal reducer with the C70 and the Komodo will be the image circle of the lens you are putting onto it, not the coverage of the adapter. This will depend on the camera and format that you're wanting to use. With the C70, these are the sensor diameters. All we need to do is divide the width or diagonal by 0.71. And this means that the lens you put on the focal reducer needs to cover a 41.74 millimeter image circle, which lots of full frame lenses will. For the Komodo, these are the sensor dims for the 6K 17 by nine mode, which is its largest format, as the camera will crop in the sensor as you reduce the resolution. Again, if we take these dimensions and divide them by 0.71, your lens with the focal reducer will need to cover a 38.06 horizontal or 43 mil diagonal. This is just over the standard for most modern full frame optics, but you should be fine. If you are wondering if the lens will cover, I would suggest heading over to our camera and lens comparison tool that I have linked in the description below to see what formats they can cover. As you mentioned earlier, there are several ways that using a focal reducer can change your overall image quality. So let's take a look at how this one performs against mounting our lens natively and using Metabones' speed booster. Bear in mind, this speed booster doesn't work very well on the C70, which is what we shot this on. And this is purely an optical performance comparison. For our first test, we shot a chart to see how both the reducers render detail. We grabbed a Canon 24-70 f2.8 Mark II EF, the Canon focal reducer, the Metabones 0.71 speed booster, and a regular RF to EF Canon adapter. The focal reducers are very similar in performance across the frame. However, I'd say that the Canon resolves detail better towards the corners and with less chromatic aberration. When comparing the performance to the native mount, we move the tripod back to account for the change in field of view. So if you can see a little change in the framing, that's why. 
And to be honest, the Canon Focal Reduced Performance is not a whole lot worse than mounting the lens natively. So I wouldn't worry about this adapter reducing the resolving power of your lenses. Both focal reducers also don't look to add any distortion from these tests, which is great. For the second test, we wanted to see how the adapters handle the light blasted directly down the lens and how the flare behaves as you plan the light through the frame. The Canon does a better job, again, at controlling the flare and not introducing much internal reflection. The Metabones introduce more flare and then a bit more evading glare. Overall, they are both good, but the Canon edges out the Metabones slightly here. So what conclusions can we draw from this video? Overall, the adapter has solid build quality, class-leading optical performance, and very decent and reliable data throughput. It's the clear option for the C70 because of the compatibility it has and the mounting system. With the Komodo, it seems like you can expect the same level of water focus as you do when using the straight pass-through adapter, but locking the adapter down is currently an issue. This new adapter will be retailing at £439 excluding VAT which is only a little bit more expensive than the Metabones option, but I really think it's worth it given the improved optical performance and lens compatibility. Let us know what you think of Canon's new focal reducer in the comments below. And if you want to keep up to date with all of our future content, make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. And thank you so much for watching.